Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How is everyone doing this morning? We're going to be reading out of 2 Peter 3.18. To him be glory both now and forever. The whole verse says, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Now this is the end of 2 Peter, so we can only go up in our context. I'm going to start in verse 11 to get a little bit of the pre-context to his final words. Um, verse 11, Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? We know that everything in the world is going to be done away with. It's going to be finished. Because it's going to burn up. There's going to be a new heaven, new earth. Since that's going to happen, since all the things we have and own are going to happen, we need to be looking for and living for that future time. Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. That new new um, creation is going to be uh, perfect in every way. Final words. Therefore, beloved, look, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, without spot, and blameless. We need to take the things he told us to do and do them. Apply them to ourselves and do them. And consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation. So this is something encouraging people who are getting tired of waiting or saying that it's taking too long for the Lord to return. The reason why it seems like he's taking long is because he has a great deal of long suffering, a great deal of patience. It is salvation. It is salvation for all who would convert, all who would change, all who would become a Christian, all who would believe. Because some it's going to take them more to get them to that place. Some it's going to take them longer to, to discover all this stuff to be true. And so if the Lord seems like he's delaying, that's why. Because he's giving space for others to believe. Because God wants that all people be saved. As also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you. As also in all his epistles, speaking them in them of these things. He, he's linking to Paul because Paul had a great deal to say that was very important. In which are some things hard to understand which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction. They've gotten to the point now where they don't even twist Paul's writings anymore. They just ignore them. Oh, Paul wasn't legitimate. Well, then why did God allow that book to be put in his Bible? Again, it comes down to the same old thing. They don't believe the Bible is accurate. As they do also the rest of the scriptures. People do this with all of the Bible because they don't think the Bible is accurate. When you take anybody who denies what a scripture says and you get them down to their core belief about it, every single one of them will admit they don't believe the Bible is accurate. Verse 17, you therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, be, beware, <coughs> lest you fall or also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. Don't let the world tell you what to believe. Read the Bible. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. When you grow in grace and knowledge of Jesus, you literally are going the opposite direction of the world. You're going, you're going contrary to the world. And because of that, your life here is going to be contrary to everyone else's life. They're not going to understand why you're living the way you are. Heaven will be full of the ceaseless praises of Jesus. Eternity. Thine unnumbered years shall speed their everlasting course. But forever and forever to him be glory. Is he not a priest for even after the order of Melchizedek? To him be glory. Is he not king forever? King of kings and Lord of lords, the everlasting father. To him be glory forever. Never shall his praises cease. That which was bought with blood deserves to last while immortality endures, and immortality will endure forever. The glory of the cross must never be eclipsed. The luster of the grave and of the resurrection must never be dimmed. O Jesus, thou shalt be praised forever. Long as immortal spirits live, 
long as the Father's throne endures forever, forever. Unto thee shall be glory. Believer, you are anticipating the time when you shall join the saints above in ascribing all glory to Jesus. But are you glorifying him now? Very interesting question he asks, asks there. The apostle's words are, to him be glory both now and forever. Will you not this day make it your prayer? Lord, help me to glorify thee. I am poor. Help me to glorify thee by contentment. Pay attention here, guys. Remember I told you there's way, diff all different ways you can glorify God in your daily life. Following the speed limit, you glorify God. Obeying the laws of the land, you glorify God. Look at what he's saying here. Help me to glorify thee by contentment, by being content. I am sick. Help me to give thee honor by patience. I have talents. Help me to extol thee by spending them for thee. I have time. Lord, help me to redeem it, that I may serve thee. I have a heart to feel, Lord. Let that heart feel no love but thine, and glow with no flame but affection for thee. I have a head to think. Lord, help me to think of thee and for thee. Thou hast put me in this world for something. Lord, show me what that is. And help me to work out my life purpose. I cannot do much, but as the widow put in her two mites, which were all her living, so, Lord, I cast my time and eternity, too, into thy treasury. I am all thine. Take me and enable me to glorify thee now in all that I say, in all that I do, and with all that I have. See, guys, I didn't come up with that. When I told you that you glorify the Lord with your life, I didn't come up with that. This person saw it too. It's in the scriptures. Help, help. Ask him to help you to do those things. Go back and look at this and read it and listen to it again. It's amazing. I can't add to it because it is exactly what I've been telling you guys. Come to that place where you glorify him with everything possible. You're not going to do it perfect, so don't think that you're going to be able to achieve that. You'll wear yourself out and never achieve it. But make the general path of your life to be one that glorifies him. And this can be in any of the things you do in life. You, like I said the other day, you glorify him by if somebody gives you too much change at the store by taking the change back in. They're going to look at you weird. I've had it happen. I did it one time. It was... What, like 85 cents, 95 cents, something like that. I took it back in. One time I did it, it was only just a, just a few, like six, seven cents. Well, you didn't have to bring that back in. I was like, but that's not my money. It's your money. I set it on the counter. <clears throat> Even those little things, we glorify God. Jesus, he made the point clear. Anyone who gives one of these little ones a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, the least thing you could do good for somebody. He will in no wise lose his reward. You glorify him by the little things. The little everyday things. Doing things right. Doing right to others. That's how we glorify him. Not just giving him praise. Not just worshiping him. Not just giving thanks. But in, in everything possible. Being kind to others when they're mean and nasty to us. See, this, this devotion writer, he gets it. He sees it in the scriptures, just like I did. And that's all I'm sharing with you guys is what I'm seeing in the scriptures. But it's really encouraging to see that somebody else out there has seen the same thing. And a lot of these devotions here lately have really been hitting home. To God be the glory, both now and forever. Amen. It doesn't get any simpler. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory and to lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. Father, thank you for this holy word and thank you for this devotion. It is such an incredible thing to see a devotion that, that reiterates the same points that I've been making. Not that it validates me or anything, but it just proves what your word says because we see other people seeing the same thing. Lord, help us. First of all, let my prayer be for all the brethren, this, um, this devotion, because it spoke perfect words. But let me add that in all the things that we do, Lord, 
If there's any way we can glorify you, make that to happen. Even if it's unknown to us, make that to happen. Make us to do the right thing, whether people are watching or not. And not worry about who's watching or whether we're going to get any accolades for it. But just do it because it's the right thing to do. Make us to glorify you in the simple things in life. Make us to remember to give thanks, to remember to praise you, to remember to honor you, to remember to glorify you. Because you are worthy of it. And that can happen in, in the everyday things we do. Because if we neglect that, what good are we as believers? And, and how are we implementing the things you told us to do in our lives? Lord, help us to be your people. To be your people and to be the light of the world and salt of the world. Help us to be that, that living example, that living sacrifice that others will see so that they too can believe, so that they too can be saved, so that they too can see what it really is to be a Christian. Because today, the examples we have out there on the forefront of all media and everything, it, they're just horrible examples. But make us to be those people that show that what, the, what a real Christian looks like. And may your love be shed abroad in all our hearts and be shared with those around us. As you show everyone mercy, I pray that we show them mercy too. As you show everyone grace, I pray that we show them grace too. And as you show them love and bestow blessings upon them, I pray that we do exactly the same so that we may be those ex exempl exemplary examples and those expressions of you living and breathing here on this earth in front of everybody in full view so that they'll, they'll wonder, is that a believer? Is that a Christian? Is that a real Christian? I've had people ask me, I've never met a Christian like you before. And the only response I could come up with was, maybe you've never met a real Christian before. Because today we find that the majority of people who call themselves believers are not. And the life they live and the examples they put forth are examples and, and representations of a life not lived to glorify you, but lived to glorify them. Lord, make us to glorify you in everything possible. Everything spoken, everything done, everything lived, awake or asleep, whatever it is, because it's all for your glory. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for Morning Devotion. It is an incredible thing when you come to that place where you look at the things that you do every day and you start to see the places where you don't glorify Him. And then you start to see the places where you do glorify Him because we keep looking for the big things. Not realizing it's the everyday little things that have the most value. And the Bible reiterates this point to us. It's an amazing thing when you come to that place where you start to recognize. Because then when you recognize, you know where you need to make changes. There's some things that I used to do, I don't do anymore. There's some things that I used to not do that I now do. So that I may glorify him in more of my life. In the daily life that I live. And when we come to that place where we start to do that, it changes how we respond. It changes how we think. It changes how we look. It changes everything about us. And, and it changes how people look at us. Some with hatred and disdain. Some with love and admiration. But in all cases, no matter which side they're on, whether they're, they're our brother or sister or our enemy, they know one thing for certain. That when they meet us, being those emissaries, those examples of Christ in us, they know that they've seen somebody who is a true believer. Like I said, they're either going to hate you or love you, one or the other. But they'll know that they've seen somebody who's a true believer. And the hope is, is that they'll give glory to God and praise Him for His works. Come to a, a surviving or a living or a, a, an eternal faith in Him. 
It's all for his glory. It's all to his praise and it's all to honor his holy name because he is worthy. He always will be worthy. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name and I'll see you in the next video.